This is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Well, Dave Rothenberg in for Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN app. Stephen A. joined the show earlier. He's on his way back to the New York, Connecticut area. So he'll be back on First Take tomorrow morning. And he will be back on this show tomorrow at 1 o'clock. The one man who has gotten more conversation about minicamp or OTAs than anybody in the history of the NFL showed up for mandatory minicamp earlier today. That being Odell Beckham Jr. I guess the Giants kind of worked him out very gingerly, didn't have him do a whole lot. I think that's the right thing. You know he's going to be fine. You move forward. And I guess this is probably a done deal. Giants are not going to renegotiate. He's not going to lose out on this kind of money. Guy's already getting paid. Look, what is he getting? $2 million this year from the Giants. $5 million from Nike. Now, I understand that he's probably worth $15, $17, 18000000 million a year. But I don't think we're going to have to have a fundraiser for a guy making $7 million this year. 866-ESPN, 866-729-3776. We saw last night. I don't think anybody was surprised. Golden State destroyed Cleveland. I guess not destroyed. They they When they went on that run in the second quarter. See, that's the thing. Golden State goes on runs better than maybe any team I've ever seen. You know, Cleveland came out. They held their own. They had an eight-point lead in the second quarter. By the time you snap your fingers, it's it's they're down 15. Like, there was a 23-point differential in that second quarter last night. That They're so fast. And that's what they do to you. If you have a, a, a dark period of four minutes of offense, then go on a 20-2 to two run. And they did last night. And really from that, now Cleveland got within three. And every time they did, Durant would pull up and stick a three in their eye. Or Clay Thompson or Steph Curry. Or there was a, a guy wide open underneath the basket. Time after time after time. 866-ESPN. John in Staten Island is on ESPN Radio. What's up, John? Hey, Dave. How are you doing, man? Just want to thank you for having me on the show. Oh, absolutely. It's a pleasure. Uh, first off, I just wanted to address the KD situation, uh, and then I wanted to ask you a question, if you don't mind. Go ahead. All right. So, um, you know, earlier you were saying that you, it doesn't really make sense to you, uh, KD signing with the Warriors, KD getting signed by the Warriors. Um, you know, first off, I 100% agree with you. It's well, well hang league. on a second. It, 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 make, it makes sense to me that the Warriors would want to sign Kevin Durant. I, to me... And look, I'm not a professional athlete, obviously. To me, I, I don't I don't really understand the rationale behind him wanting to go to a team that's already a championship caliber club, but that's just my own thing. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. Right, yeah. Uh, so you know, I okay, so in, in that case, it does make sense even even if I'm in Kevin Durant's shoes. It makes sense because, you know, he's just not getting anywhere with Oklahoma City. He put a nine. Not getting ago. anywhere. They were up three one in the conference finals last year. And a couple of years yeah, before but, that, they went to the NBA Finals. Yeah, you know, you're definitely right. But at the end of the day, what matters is the result. The result is he was up, but he lost. But, they, John, but John whose fault is that? Is that Steven you know, Adams' year, fault or is that Kevin Durant's fault? See, that's the thing, though. I'm not I'm not somebody who, who puts it all on one player. For me, a lot You're of right. It's, not, it's, it's on two. It's on Durant and it's on Russell Westbrook. So Durant said – I mean, this is what he said – I can't win here. I'll go there. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I 100% don't agree with what he did. For me, if I was in his shoes, I wouldn't have done it. But let me ask you something. Yes. I'm a big Chris Paul fan. Next season is a big season for him. You know, he's he's ending, uh, you know, he's not really in his prime anymore, but, you know, he's still got his IQ. Still pretty good. For me, right, yeah, 100%, definitely. Uh, for me, if I was him, I'm looking at San Antonio. What do you think? Yeah, I think San Antonio is the, the club that makes a lot of sense for him. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, where, where else is there that, that's a team that's on the verge? I mean, we just discussed it. Thanks for the call, John. There's four teams that have better than 30-1 to 1 odds. You're not going to go to Boston. I don't, I don't think, even though they're good, how close are they? I mean, of those four teams, they're clearly the fourth. They're not going to go to Boston. He's not going to go to Cleveland. He's not going to go to Golden State. Where else is there? If he wants to win, the only real choice for him to go to try to accomplish that, unless he goes to a, another club, you know, like like New Orleans, you know, with with with, uh, with Cousins and Anthony Davis, and they had, but that's not gonna you're not gonna start fresh. You got to start on a team that's on the verge of getting it done. 
Dave in L.A. Dave, you're on ESPN Radio. What's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing, Dave? Two quick things. First off, to me it should have been 2-2 going into game five. Should have been, yeah. You, you, you said it was one of the worst NBA finals you've ever seen, So, or just not even close. It wasn't it should close. Be two, two going, it should be 2-2 going into game five. I couldn't have seen a better game five. Down 17 points, bring it all the way back to three. It took all of Kevin Durant, everything he had. Dave, did you watching that last game night. last night, did you really have a thought in your mind that Cleveland was going to win? Like once, once we got going and once Golden State took over the lead, did you really have a thought in your mind that Cleveland was going to win every, that game? Every single time J.R. Smith, who came up huge, who no one's even talking about. Yeah, he was very good last night. J.R. Smith hit one of those three-pointers. I think we all thought the Cavs are creeping back. Time after time, J.R. would hit another three. And when you got LeBron James on the floor, I think absolutely every time. you know. But it took all of Kevin Durant and Curry coming up huge in Game 5. And I don't think they win without Kevin Durant yesterday. Also, with the second thing I wanted to say, or I don't think they even come close to winning the championship, for anyone who doesn't think that the Cavs getting Carmelo Anthony for love doesn't make them equal to Golden State is wrong. No, you're wrong. It doesn't make them ever. equal to Golden State. And why Why would the Knicks do that, Dave? Who is the, the Knicks are ready to get rid of him. The yeah, but you're, then you're going to take out a guy that's locked in for multiple years at a huge number? Isn't that the whole point of if getting they, rid of Carmelo? If they do do it, who did Carmelo ever have playing with him in Denver? Who did he ever have playing with him in New York? You give Carmelo a real squad, and that's a real squad look with LeBron and that team. If you give Carmelo, I just don't see how anyone could say, you know, it, it doesn't make them evenly match. I, it I don't doesn't. It the, it not only does it, Dave, and I got to run, not only does it not make them evenly matched, it doesn't bring them anywhere near making this thing evenly matched. If you really believe that swapping out Kevin Love and putting Carmelo in makes them see eye to eye with Golden State, I don't know what you're talking about. You add Carmelo to that team. He doesn't play any defense. He doesn't pass the ball at all. He can shoot and he can score. He doesn't want to run. I'll tell you that. Make sure he'll slow down the ball every chance he gets. Mustafa wants to talk about this NBA. What's up, Mustafa? I'm doing all right, but the NBA has a Golden State Warriors problem. Every team in the league, you're looking at this NBA right now. I'm watching all the other teams throughout the season. And the teams like the Knicks, the Raptors, uh, Portland Trailblazers, they're not even the same cosmos as the Warriors right now. I mean, I'm, uh, it's, it's as if I'm watching a different league altogether, like a different division in the level of talent, you know. And this Because it is. Season, that, the, it, Mustafa, it, is. You, it feels like that because it is that right now. Absolutely it is. And it's just ridiculous to me. It's inconceivable to when I was watching that game last night, I'm like, there's no way the Cavs can come back. Nope. It's, I, knew, I knew it from the get-go. Even we all knew it. The, very, sec, very the second Golden State took that lead in the second quarter, the game was over. In fact, if you look at my Twitter timeline, at Rothenberg ESPN, I tweeted, this game is over. Because it was. And even when Cleveland got within three, never once did I think they were going to come back and win this game. I know. and But LeBron James, I'm not going to hit on him too much because you know what? How Michael can you Jordan hate never, Mustafa, How Michael can you Jordan, hate on him? I'm not. I, 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 but people are. People are, are saying that he are hitting on his finals record right now. I'm. I'm not doing that. I'm the opposite of that. Because Michael Jordan never faced a team as good as the Warriors. Never. Look Mustafa, the, can, let me ask you a question. If you took sure. in his prime Michael Jordan, yeah. and took him and put him on this club, and took LeBron off, what do you think the the result is in the NBA Finals this year? The Warriors will probably win in seven games, man. I, I know how great Michael Jordan was, but to me, it, it's just too much firepower. The defense, the, the other guys have to stay. Jordan's going to average 40 against the Warriors, hands See, down. LeBron went crazy against the Warriors. It, exactly. I mean, LeBron is great. Jordan is great. But the other guys, I don't trust guys like Tristan Thompson and Kevin Love played guard. You don't trust them because they're not trustworthy, Mustafa. Thanks, I got to run. You talk about holes, Kyrie Irving, great Robin to the Batman of LeBron James. That's it. Yeah, J.R. Smith had a great game last night. He was awful, awful a couple games in the series. 
Kevin Love did not have a good series. Darren Williams is unplayable. Tristan Thompson. Tristan Thompson was so bad that Jeff Van Gundy had to go on a rant defending the Kardashian name. That's how bad Tristan Thompson was in this series. So all these pieces, Kyle Korver, oh, you leave him open and it's like a layup for anybody else. Well, when does that start happening? Because I didn't see it in this series. Iman Shumpert? Iman Shumpert it might be a worse offensive player now than the day he came into the NBA with the New York Knicks. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. It's obviously a lot of NBA talk. Draft is a week from Thursday, June 22nd. Knicks go eight. Nets, says we know, gave up number one to Boston, who gets a little bit better, be it Markel Fultz or Lonzo Ball or Josh Jackson. Can't imagine they go in any direction beyond that. Darren Fox is a kid. I, I love that kid. I don't know that the Knicks can, but if the Knicks can figure out a way to grab the Aaron Fox, sounds like it's one of three for the Knicks. The French kid, Malik Monk, Dennis Smith Jr., one of those three. I'd be very happy if it was Dennis Smith or Malik Monk. I, I don't know. I just don't know anything about the French kid, so it's hard for me to say, yeah, that would be great. I know Fran Fraschilla likes him, but I don't know much about him. NBA season officially over. We'll pick it up in October, and the conversation will be exactly the same. Who's the best? Golden State. Who's the best in the East? Can LeBron will his team to a championship? You know, guys, what we don't even discuss is LeBron is now 32. At what point do you think he starts to show some signs of, of wear and tear? And you may not like him. You may not think he's a whatever, – whatever you believe about LeBron. You can't deny that if you watch him play, there's almost no difference from 25-year-old LeBron and 32-year-old LeBron. Absolutely none. 866-ESPN. In fact, physically he's as imposing – Defensively, he's as good. His passing is the same. His rebounding is unbelievable. I think it's fair to say he's a better outside shooter than he's ever been. TR in Newark. TR, you're on ESPN Radio. Hey, Dave. How's it going, man? Good, man. What's Great up, buddy? You got. Thank you. I just want to make a few comments here. Um, I think that it's, um, to me, I think it's very simple how you beat the um, – Warriors. Uh, I believe that if you can't beat them, you got to join them, Dave. You have to get some sharpshooters. And if you get some sharpshooters, that will clear up that lane for LeBron. And he can who, do who's the best? LeBron who's is, the best three-point shooter in the NBA? I really don't know. Well, I, don't know. I mean, Kyle like, Korver, is it not fair to say Kyle Korver is one of the great shooters from distance in the NBA? He's in the top. 10, but he keeps folding under pressure. He well, do so, so they the added score. what you're saying, and it didn't do anything for them when it mattered. But that's only one guy. You got to bring in a few guys. You got to you got to load on that bench and put those sharpshooters. They should be drafting only guys that. Are and then Tr, you know, you know what there. happens. And then these guys can't defend, and you see Golden State put up 150 points a game. Hmm. Okay. Well, you know that's your opinion. Uh, the other thing I want to say is, uh, as a Jordan fan, okay, and I've been a Jordan fan ever since he's been out playing in the NBA, but a lot of people that are Jordan fans are probably thinking the same thing I'm, go I'm thinking I'm going to say. Um, LeBron is not Jordan. He'll never be. Le LeBron is a great player of his era, and LeBron can only be compared to players like Magic Johnson. If Jordan was playing Why? last night. Why? No. Because they're similar players. Magic Johnson and LeBron are very similar players. He's not a scorer. He's not a Michael Jordan. <laughs> he's Kobe, a, you, know, he's yeah, you, you know, he averaged 34 points a game in the series, right? It doesn't matter. LeBron does not have that killer instinct like Kobe and Jordan. What I want to tell you is, is if Michael Jordan was playing last night with the Cavaliers, Michael Jordan would have probably scored 60, 65, uh -huh. whatever it takes to win. But, but. So you but think LeBron, you think Michael would have been on on Golden on Cleveland last night and they would have won the game? I believe it would have been a lot closer, or they may have won the game. Yes, I believe so. And if you look at history and see what Jordan does, Jordan doesn't lose championships like that. Right. So and and, and Tr, believe... tell tell me tell me the team that was anywhere near as good as this Golden State team that Michael Jordan went up against. 
There was a lot of good teams. But Tell me the team Arizona, that was this good. Like I said, there's a lot of good Tell teams. Tell me the team this, that was this good. This team is shooting three-pointers all day long throughout the whole game. So you're That's telling me you, there is no team that was this good. I just think that. Was Michael Utah Jordan this good with Carl Malone and John Stockton? They were good. They were, they were good. good. I, they I, weren't this good. No, not this good. But Sean like said, Kemp and, and, and Gary Payton, were they this good? I believe they were good. No, they were they not. Were as... No, they were not. Michael so Jordan, TTR, me. let me break it down for you. I got to run. Let me break it down for you. Michael Jordan was great. Michael Jordan never faced a team with the talent that Golden State had. Never. And it's not close. So don't sit here and tell me that, that Phoenix with Barkley and 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 Hornacek and, and, and God knows who else they had on that club. Cedric Ceballos was anywhere near this club. It's not a knock on Michael Jordan, but he never faced a team that was this talented. Jordan and Rockland. Jordan, you're on ESPN Radio. Hey, how are you? I want to talk about the new era NBA and how it's honestly ruining the NBA since like the 1990s. It's Although, hard. Jordan, I don't like it either, but have you seen the numbers from this NBA Finals? Yeah, but I think that has to do with like social media just expanding and everybody like basketball becoming like, more of a way of life than it was back in the day. But it started with Pierce and Garnett and Allen. It wasn't as bad when they did it because I don't think any of those players were in their prime at the time. But when LeBron moved to Miami, it just paved the way for Durant to come. And what Durant did was honestly unexplainable. It was the weakest move I've ever seen from a superstar. They were beating the Warriors 3-1 the year before. And the game's just changing because of this. So there's no rebuilding. It doesn't really matter who has the first pick in the draft, honestly, because what, what is Lonzo Ball going to do for the Celtics or Marco Fultz? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, them. like, Lonzo Ball can do. If I mean, Lonzo Ball is 19 years old, right? If you get a stud 19-year-old in eight years when he's 27 in the prime of his career, maybe he will be the Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, LeBron James of the next era when those guys are done and, and maybe guys want to play on that team. So that's how I think it matters. Next year, will Lonzo Ball or Markel Fultz or any of these guys take whatever team they're on and put them over the top better than Golden State, better than Cleveland? No. Yeah, and that, I honestly think that's the problem with the NBA. I mean, some teams get lucky. The Thunder got lucky with – I wouldn't say get lucky. They did it the right way with Westbrook, Durant, James Harden, and the Warriors – happened like Seth turned out and Clay turned out but there's no rebuilding anymore you just have to join a team with LeBron on it or a team like the Warriors and the way the game just played these days it changed the game there's no defense every game every the final shouldn't be 130 to 120 every game there's no defense and I know the the, the, the scoring is more powerful than I would say it used to be but the refs just call in favor of the offense. they call everything I mean Jordan thanks for the call Jordan it it, it does get to be a bit much Every possession, you've got foul calls. Hey, you know what? You know, you know in, the N- in the NFL, we talk all the time about what's a catch and what is not a catch. In the NBA, what's a shot and what is not a shot? Like, the act of shooting has become the catch in the NBA. I have no idea. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! NBA is done. We get ready for the NBA draft next week, and then we get some time off. We are less than three months from the NFL season. You can stop the presses. Odell Beckham showed up for Giants minicamp, so everybody who's beating him up day after day after day can calm themselves with that. We saw, I think, what what I think is fair to say, if not the best team in the history of the NBA, one of the top teams in the history of the NBA, just walk through and prove a point with so much unbelievable talent. And we've had a little bit of conversation today, although I I am attempting to stray from it about LeBron and Michael. Like, like I, I forget about Michael, take Michael off the table, move him to the side. What more did you want LeBron James to do in this series? The guy averaged a triple double. He went for 34, 12 and 10. No one has ever done that before. And his team got really, for the most part, dismantled in this series. What are you looking for him? Like, what could LeBron do that you would not call me and say, see, same old LeBron James? Because to be honest, I don't even know that we give the guy the credit that he's deserving. 
how great he actually is. Is he Michael? He's not Michael. I'm not comparing the two. But this notion that he's not a winner, I just think is so off base from so many people. Khalif in Jersey. Khalif, you're on ESPN Radio. Nah, how you doing, Dave? Good. All right. I have a few points, right? A first point is, right, LeBron James, in the, in the middle of the season, uh, the All-Star break, he cried for a better team. He got a better team. He got Cal Corver, which everybody thought at the time, oh, he's a sharpshooter. Right. He led the league. He led the league in three-point percentage also, right? They got uh, Shannon Fry, another three-point threat. Right. On top of that, Kevin Love, when Kevin Love was in Minnesota, Kevin Love was scoring about 40 points, averaging about, I mean, pulling down. He was not scoring 40 points. But, Khalif, Khalif, let me ask you a question, okay? Yes. How would you analyze how Kyle Korver played in these NBA Finals? Kyle Korver, he didn't make the shot. He was when, awful. When the opportunity how, would, how would you say Kevin Love was in the NBA Finals? Kevin Love was – Kevin Love didn't have a uh, – people say he had a bad finals. He didn't have a bad finals. He had a, a off, like, game or two. Because if you – the first two games, he had good games. I think game three, he didn't score over 10, but he had about 13 rebounds. Yeah, and, but come uh, on. Six. 13 – you need him no, to no, score. No, if you I got good no, Kevin Love in games I, I three and games five, we could be talking about this series continuing right now. I understand what you're saying, Dave, but at the same time, go to State – I right, get it. Granted, Kevin, you have Kevin Durant, you have Steph Curry. Clay Thompson did nothing this series, and Draymond Green did nothing this series. Nothing. They didn't. He, you know what, Khalif? No, no. They didn't no. have to. Oh, Clay oh, Thompson, oh, look at his game it's, three. It's, look it's, at it's what Clay Thompson did in game three. Do you have any recollection of that? You're sitting here telling me he did nothing in no, this in this series. Game three, it was his highest scoring game. Game three was his highest scoring game. Other than that, he didn't. Other than that, he. He had, other than that, he had a mediocre at best finals. And you could see the look on his face last night because he was upset about, it looked like he was upset about the way he played. He but scored also, 30 right? points on 11 of 18 shooting and 6 of 11 from 3 in the one game they really needed him. Kevin Durant was scored at, at, at will and Curry scored a ton. They didn't need them to. Fault, they but, got, they got a big game from Andre Iguodala last Please. night. Who gave Dave, who gave you a big game besides LeBron and Kyrie at all in this series? Well, uh, uh, um, J.R. Smith. Showed yeah, last night J.R. Smith gave you a good game. Yeah. Okay. How was he? Also, how was he? The what, first couple of what, games of the series. No, but what happened was the Cleveland had no defense. It's not. It's not uh, Golden State fault that Ian Clark. Um, uh, David West came in, gave him a uh, couple. Uh, Andre Iguodala came in and gave him twenty. It's not Golden State fault. Dead Kelly, dead. if you're right, Golden point. State is an elite offensive point. team, and Cleveland is a subpar defensive team. We saw it all year okay. long, and they were able to get past it in the in the East, but they couldn't get past it in the NBA Finals. And also, Cleveland. But look what Cleveland did. Cleveland scored uh, shot. Uh, 24 threes. They shot of over 50% from the three-point line in, in, in game four. And they like, destroyed he, them. Cleveland had more than enough. Cleveland had more than enough to prove themselves. What they did, what it was, was like the, uh, like I think it was PR, LeBron James has no killer instinct. Oh, uh, here killer we go. In him. I'm so what, what, LeBron what, what so LeBron, good, it, it is LeBron's it. fault that they didn't win the series. No, you're, ta- you're taking it wrong. I'm asking you a question. Is it LeBron's fault? No, it's not LeBron's fault. It's not LeBron's fault. But if LeBron had killer instinct, it would been a, it would have been a better it would have been a better finals. They all right. There you go. If LeBron and and that and there and there is the exact person that wants to beat up LeBron James. If LeBron had a killer instinct, this would have been very different. For LeBron, but he's James, an, he's incapable. He's Khalif, I'm I'm done. I can't I can't I can't go back and forth with people. If you're calling me to tell me. That Cleveland didn't win because LeBron didn't didn't do something. I don't want to have a conversation about it. Like it's ridiculous. Ben in Brooklyn, you're on ESPN Radio. Ben. Hey Dave, good afternoon. Uh, I just want to make two quick points. First of all, uh, people are calling up and uh, you're comparing um, LeBron to MJ, and you're saying MJ, if he would have been on the if he was on the Cavs, would they have won the series? Now, even though I would think I 
I agree with you that the Warriors would have won. I think that's an unfair comparison because when you say what would a player have done on a different team, if I asked you a question, what would LeBron have done with the Bulls, I don't think he would have done as well as MJ because the Cavs are tailor-made for LeBron's strengths and weaknesses. Not weaknesses, he doesn't really have much, but definitely his strengths. And MJ's team... You don't think that, that, that these strengths. guys' games translate to any era and any team? Absolutely. I'm not saying he wouldn't have been great in this era and LeBron wouldn't have been great in that era. But if I were to ask someone if LeBron... LeBron is the best player in the world and KD is second. But right. I personally believe that KD is a better fit on the Warriors, where if you ask the Warriors in an honest-to-death moment, would they rather have LeBron or KD, they would want KD because he's a better fit on their team. They don't it need LeBron matter. as much. If you, if, it doesn't matter. If you switched LeBron and Kevin Durant, you'd have the same result. You'd have the you, same, you, 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 mean, have you could the same take result. any of these. Gra- and you're right. Kevin Durant is a brilliant fit. Thanks for the call, Ben. A phenomenal fit. I said to start the show, I said the thing that amazes me is that they didn't skip a beat when they added Kevin Durant to this organization. But I'm I'm sick and tired of having – because because you have to defend LeBron. When people are going to call up and beat up LeBron, oh, I can't do this, and he's not a winner, he doesn't have this killer attitude, and he joins other teams that are so good. He took a team that when he left, was the worst team in the NBA. And he led them to the NBA Finals. Do I think that LeBron has had moments in his career where he did not do what I thought he would? Yes. The series against Boston in the Conference Finals when it looked like he wanted no part of that. The 2011 Finals against the Dallas Mavericks when they couldn't shoot the ball from outside of 12 feet and Mavs went zone and it totally took them out of their game. Yes. But am I going to sit here and beat up LeBron for this NBA Finals? You guys are nuts. Pat in Jersey. Pat, you're on ESPN Radio. Dave, good to hear you, man. I called last week to talk about how uh, I agreed with all your points. I agree with you again this time, man. You could put Jordan on this team, and people seem to forget. Jordan, yes, better defensively, will probably score because the rules are different. He'd still lose because the support and cast. And that's what everybody fails to realize. In Chicago, he had a great supporting cast. And not only did he have a great supporting cast, he had a great defensive support. Pippen is an elite defender. Rodman was an elite defender. Jordan was an elite defender. It's LeBron and only LeBron that are plus defenders on this team. Exactly. And Ron Harper was a good defender, too. Very good defender. Very underrated defender. Yes, 100%. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But the second point I wanted to... uh, kind of disagree with you about this point i was waiting for someone to talk about it and it um it was talking about the number one and the number two players and in the nfl you said uh aaron Rodgers is number one and tom brady's number two i have an argument that may, might make you change your mind about that i doubt it but you can try all right aaron Rodgers last won a championship in 2010 in the playoffs like peyton manning and like Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers has come up short. And not in losses. I'm talking about just performances. Since 2010, he's only, he's only managed to throw for 300 yards and multiple I, touchdowns I, I don't, in two Pat, games. I don't care Both about came, every, every stat came, like, game in and game out. I don't think Tom Brady's as good as Aaron Rodgers. And if you ask any general manager physically who's better quarterback, it's not even close right now. Well, physically, yes. And here's my point. I was going to touch on that. Physically, Aaron Rodgers is better. But in crunch time, that physicality is not showing up. It's not. In the playoffs, he's had terrible games. In crunch time, Tom Brady hasn't. He's only had about, like, two since 2010. What, what, you look what, at player, has been on, what player has been on substantially better teams? Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady? Uh, from an offensive standpoint? From a, from a, team, from a team standpoint. Well, I... From, from a, a team, team standpoint, I'm just talking about from a team standpoint. Well, of course, Tom Brady's always had yeah, the better defense, and, that, and that's my but point. Tom is Brady, that, you know, you know Pat, I got to run. Do you, if you remember back in the early days of of Tom Brady, and I know this is blasphemy to say, and he's great now, and it's been great for a really long time. Tom Brady, you know, you know the phrase people get so upset was a game manager. You remember that first Super Bowl? Tom Brady was not this. Tom Brady, what they went twenty to seventeen. And they had a pick six from Ty Law against the Rams? No. 
it took Tom Brady a while to become the quarterback that he is. And Tom Brady is one of the great all-time quarterbacks. But he does not have the physical tools. And he has had way better teams than Aaron Rodgers. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Stephen A. back tomorrow. You heard him a little bit earlier here today saying, clearly Golden State's the better team. Like anybody that is sitting here saying, you know, these are two very evenly matched teams and it came down to a play here and a play there. You just, you're not seeing what was very obvious. And that is Golden State is clearly the better team. Cleveland got no production from Kevin Love. Very little outside of last night from J.R. Smith. Nothing from Kyle Korver. Nothing from Tristan Thompson. I mean, the secondary players on Golden State performed. The secondary players on Cleveland did not. I said when, before the series started, LeBron is going to give you 35 and 13 and 11. And it's what everyone else does that will determine. And LeBron gave you, what, 34, 13, and 10? And what everyone else did was just not enough. Billy in Jersey. Billy, you're on ESPN Radio. Dave, real quick. Before LeBron went to Miami and he won his championships, uh, we were having conversations about who's the best player in the NBA, LeBron or Durant. After he went to Miami, won his championships, that conversation started to fade. And I think that Kevin Durant seen the writing on the wall, and he said, you know what? I'm not going to go out like Carl Malone or Patrick Hugh. If I don't do something, I'm going to sit here, and it's going to be like Michael Jordan winning championship after championship again, and let me do something to put myself back in the conversation. And if they keep winning the way they're winning, if he stays there. But, Billy, how far was he from winning last year? I know. I know. Close. Close. But now now it's a sweep. Now for now it's not even. Oh, the so now, now he'll win this year, and he'll win next year, and then he'll win the year after. I mean, let, let's uh-huh. be honest. And uh, thanks for the call, Billy. If I gave you hundred dollars and said you got to put uh, uh, the next five years, Golden State wins three or more championships. Would you put it on the three or more, or would you put it on the under? I think I put it on the three or more. Who's beating this team? What player from college is coming into the NBA? To make that club so much better. I mean, Boston is a Final Four team. And they're going to add the best player not on a club right now. You think they're going to beat Golden State next year? Bet you they don't. Ross and Syosset. You're on ESPN. What's up, Ross? Dave, you're absolutely right. You you probably need the next LeBron James to come in to beat this team. Um, I just wanted to make a point before I did. I wanted to say that, you know, you do such a great job. It's really not blowing smoke up your, uh, up your behind. Nice. Uh, you nice really save. do great. And, you know, it, but it's people, not everyone realizes that you come from a, a town, Roslyn, and Roslyn's a very affected area. And oh, the here, fact we that you, here we go. Here we are. Where are you going? Where, Ross, where are you going with this? No, no, no. I'll tell you now. I, I'm just, it's, it's my praise for you. I, I live around the block and I know what Roslyn is like. It's very affected. And you came out such a wonderful human being with such grace. And you're like, you're not. You're just like a regular guy who's just so smart. So I just want to give you that praise, okay? It's only because I'm familiar. And I wanted to say this, and then I'll leave it because I know you have a lot to do. You know, the problem is, is that, you know, the media does what the fans want. Sometimes the fans don't understand that what they're getting from the media is because the media feeds what the fans want. That's what gets ratings. And so the fans have this propensity to just keep raising the bar on LeBron. So the media does the same because they want to feed for the fans. But the problem is, is every single time you raise the bar on LeBron, you constantly get phone calls that LeBron is just not living up to expectations, which is the hundredth and furthest thing from the truth because the man is an exceptional talent. Take care. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I don't know. You know, all the people that call and you analyze it, you you sift through the numbers and the stats and, and everything. All I say is, I, what are you looking for from this guy that he's not giving you? He doesn't score a lot in the fourth quarter. Well, look, the guy is not predicated on scoring. And the one time that I think you were really bothered with it was game three in which Kevin Love missed a layup and Kyle Korver missed a wide open three. People say, well, I want him taking it to the basket. All right. He's not Michael Jordan. He plays a different brand of game. Ruben in Jersey. Ruben, you're on ESPN Radio. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Thank Good, you for Ruben. taking my call. 
I agree with you a thousand percent what you're saying about uh, LeBron, man. It, it would have to be the Cavs would have had to sign Kawhi Leonard this offseason for it to be the equivalent of what the Warriors did last year. But uh, the point I wanted to talk to you about, and I feel like not enough people are speaking about it. I know we were talking about the ratings on these uh, NBA finals this year, that they're through the roof. But I feel like the NBA, if this continues where these small market teams are growing stars and they leave to go to other teams, what's going to happen eventually to those small market teams? Like, for instance, this Utah at the end of the year. If Gordon Hayward leaves, you know, they're on the brink of doing something good this year. They're back to square one. Where do the Pacers go? It's so, tough, you know what, but th- this is the nature of the beast. And, and, and you know what, it's a real problem, Ruben, and thanks for the phone call. But you've got the haves and the have-nots right now in the NBA. Now, currently, it hasn't affected it. In two, three, four years, will it affect it? Remains to be seen. Good stuff, everybody. Stephen A. will be back with you tomorrow right here on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app.